All right, guys, so I just got out this last weekend um, and tried out the shock therapy springs, got the cage on, so I had a lot of changes to test out. And I'm happy to report that this spring kit is dollar for dollar the best money I've ever spent on a side-by-side, -side, period. I ride East Coast um, slow wooded trails, uh, and the the talon is, is really, really oversprung. Um, when you ride it, I mean, you will... It, it's not like it's going to beat you up, but like you, you do get a lot of, of jarring and slow speed chop and chatter. And this 100% takes care of that. It actually surprised me. Um, my girlfriend riding, was riding with me this weekend. And that was actually one of the first things that she said is, is there something different on here? Like it feels like it's smoother. And um, yeah, so I mean, for, for her to even notice something like that, because she really doesn't notice something unless you can see it, uh, you know, it is a, a testament to, to how much improvement this is. I do not have the internal valving done. Uh, I just did the spring kit, but I'm telling you it is worth every penny. Um, ground clearance is good. Uh, that, you know, I'll check it after two, 300 miles just to see, you know, if there's any sag set in and then shock therapy says it shouldn't sag after that. So if you're considering a, a shock therapy, uh, dual rate spring kit for your 1000 R, 100% two thumbs up get it it's worth every freaking penny all right guys today's video um is going to be about the shock therapy uh dual rate spring kit for the honda talon 1000 r uh to, i'm going to do it a little bit different than i normally do videos uh, i'm not going to do so much as like a step-by-step -step instructional how-to it's going to be more or less kind of time lapse overview i don't know we'll figure out what it looks like uh but more actually of a review um so you're going to see some of the installation stuff. You're going to get a look at what I've got, what I'm going to. Uh, and then I'm actually going to put some miles on them and come back and talk about them. So that it's more or less an overview video instead of like a directed install. Uh, so as you can see, I've got the machine in the air. Stock tires are on just because I've been road riding. And I pulled the shock off. Um, I currently have the All Things UTV tender springs. So only the upper springs. These lower springs are factory. Uh, I do have those um, All Things UTV tender springs front and rear. So these are also not the factory top springs, but this is the factory lower spring. Uh, the reason I'm switching is I want a more plush ride. Um, these all things UTV springs do a decent job. It's not like it's night and day difference where they, you know, completely change the ride quality. I will say they helped some, um, but they more or less do a better job of just giving you ride height as opposed to quality. So quality is what I'm going for. Uh, the new ones will actually be in tomorrow. They'll be a silver color. That's just the way shock therapy coats all their springs, as far as I'm aware. Um, so they won't be red anymore. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get the time lapse set up. And uh, we'll uh, kind of talk you through this as we go. And if there's anything specific to call out, I'll kind of pause it and show you. Like I may show you how I can press these and take the spring purge clip and all that out. But uh, stay tuned and we'll get to the review part here shortly. Okay, so you just saw uh, the removal of one of the front shocks. I'm not, again, not gonna go into the entire process of removing it, but I've already got this one taken care of and I broke my um, crossover rings loose as well as my locking nuts loose and just put it back in there until my springs actually come in the mail. I put everything back together just so I don't lose parts. And now the thing to know, uh, so question one I'm sure is gonna be asked is what are these spring compressors and where did I get them? The answer is they are Shankly I got them on Amazon and the link will be in the description of the video. Look to the description for the link, it will be there. Uh, thing number two, once you get this compressed, it takes the uh, tension off of the spring perch. So what I'm gonna do here in just a second, I don't think I can do it one handed, is move the bump stop down, that way I can drop the spring perch. And then there is a C-clip in there that you take off with some snap ring pliers. Uh, let's see if I can, and I got it a little bit. There it goes. So this uh, C-clip, I use some bent nose snap ring pliers. These are Icons. Uh, they're just from Harbor Freight, but they're pretty nice. And I put it in there like so and get it. I know I won't be able to do this one-handed, uh, but it's pretty easy to, to take off of there. Um, so I'll walk that off and then talk you through a couple little things that I personally will do to prep for the new springs.
Okay, so as I'm sure you saw, I go on video saying something's not too difficult and then end up having to fight with it for a minute, but yeah, that's how it goes. So I just took that one off with a screwdriver. Again, it's really not that bad. I just pried it off, and then once you kind of walk it out of that groove, it'll come right out. So the things I wanted to explain to you, this is the spring perch that goes on the shock right here. It just butts up against that C-clip and holds the springs on. And then you're also gonna have your spring divider. The long side faces the bottom of the shock, so that's how it goes on and off. And then this is your bump stop. You may have to slide this down to get that spring perch off. Um, you could do that with a screwdriver, you could pull down on it. If you've got it, your uh, mainspring compressed, however you wanna get it off. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take the entire shock over my sink uh, and wash it up just to clean the threads up and get it prepped for the new springs. Um, and then I'll also clean this perch up as well as the divider, just to kind of keep things a little bit tidier. And then uh, I'm gonna be selling the All Things UTV springs. So I've already got that one over there cleaned and I'll get this one cleaned up. I do have my OEM springs uh, currently soaking right now and some uh, degreaser and soap just to break some of the grime off of those, um, just to keep those cleaned up and I'll store those until whenever the day comes that it's time to sell this machine. And uh, we'll get to the rears here in just a second. Okay, another quick update. Both front shocks are cleaned up. The They're both just loosely put back on there. Uh, factory springs are over here. One's soaking to get cleaned. And the all things UTV springs are over there so I can package those up later to whoever buys those. And uh, I'm about to start on the rears, but I did want to call out. And the reason I put these shocks back on are one of the reasons. A, I don't want to lose hardware, and B, they're side specific. So don't put your driver's side shock on the passenger side or vice versa. Uh, they are side specific. Same goes to the rear. Don't, uh, don't swap the sides because the reservoirs are clocked differently uh, and you may run into clearance issues. Uh, so like I said, I'm going to start the rear. Uh, I'll time lapse one of the sides. Uh, it'll just kind of be rinse repeat for both sides and uh, call out something with this spring perch down here in that guard. Um, I've done it before, so I know what to look for, but I'll just show it to you. It's nothing super complicated. Okay, here's the one little thing I wanted to show you with the rears that's different from the front. There's this little notch right here that has this keyed into it. So when you go to remove it, you're gonna notice there on the top, there's that, uh, that key right there that it'll only go on and off one way. Uh, so then when it's off, that is your spring perch. It's the guard. It's all in one. Um, again, it's just another C-clip that comes off, and then that whole thing comes. And just like the front, pull your shocks off. Or, excuse me, your springs off. Fronts, done. Rears, done. Next thing now is just to wait for the new shock therapy springs to come in. Everything is cleaned up. It's ready to go. So it should be relatively simple and straightforward once those get here. I'll install them, kind of show you the measurements and whatnot that I'm setting everything at. Uh, and then the last part of the video will be my thoughts on, you know, improvements, ride improvements, what I think of it, all that good stuff. So uh, stay tuned for that part and I will catch you then. As you can see here by this nice big shock therapy box, uh, springs have delivered. They're packaged incredibly well. Uh, so just to give you an idea how these things arrive, they use this forming foam. Um, tenders here, lower springs there. I don't know if they're front or rear. I'll have to look at them. Oh, there's something front upper so these look like they're fronts uh lowers are on the bottom uh, i think i'm actually going to keep all this to store my oem springs in um but yeah without further ado we'll go ahead and get to throwing these things on there i don't think it'll take too long uh i like i said i'll mention the like preload and crossover adjustments once i get all those done and give you my thoughts after everything's installed on how they do now next a little tidbit about the spring divider this is the factory spring divider and what we're going to do is we're going to clock these springs. Um, so what that means is the ends of these springs where they terminate right there, you want them to be 180 degrees from one another. So if you look on the spring divider, uh, every quarter rotation around it, you're going to notice these little marks. See them there? So that's used to help you clock your springs and get them 180 degrees from each other. So I'm going to line one up there and then the lower spring will be lined up on the back side. And what that does is it helps to keep this straight. So you see how there's a little bit of deflection in there. 
if you don't clock them correctly and you get you know both of them lined up here what it's going to do is they're going to push against one another and it could cause this to push against the shock body and rub it as they travel um, and one of my springs actually shows a little bit of that from prior use so you see that right there that's what causes that wear so when you get dirt and mud and grime and stuff in there combined with this thing pushing up against that shock body it's like sandpaper so that's why you want to clock them correctly Okay, so here's an assembled front shock. Um, again, springs are clocked. So there's the end of that one. And there's the end of that spring. We can use those little markings to help guide all that. The uh, spring perch is back on. See clip is in. So that's on and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the machine and do the other side the exact same way. And then I'll show you the rear and explain those measurements as well where the starting reference point's gonna be. All right, guys, so uh, I did one round of adjusting after initially getting them on there with the shock therapy starting points. So what I'm going to do now is go through and show you my actual final measurements uh, as opposed to just the starting points I showed you earlier. Uh, as you can see, it's setting up basically exactly where it needs to be. Uh, CV angles are slightly down, so that's where I want that. And then in the rear, it does look like it's sitting maybe just a shade high, but... Uh, after these things settle in, it should come right back down to where it needs to be. Um, it's about two to 300 miles before I'm gonna check it again. So we'll see how that is. Uh, ground clearance numbers. So on the front, at this A-arm tab, I actually measured to the bottom of my skid plate because I have an aftermarket skid plate. I am at um, 14 inches. So that is a half an inch higher than they recommend. And in the rear, I measured to this point at my skid plate and um, right at 14 inches. So again, higher than they recommend, but that will give it a little bit to settle in. And my ground clearance or ride height measurements are taken with stock wheels and tires um, based on their recommendations. So um, I think I may have done myself a favor by um, raising it up just a little bit to kind of let it settle in. If it settles past it, obviously I can just adjust it that one time and raise it back up. So without further ado, uh, front shocks from the bridge of the shock to the bottom of the preload nut, five and a half inches. And then from the bridge of the shock to the bottom of the crossover ring is, you can see it there, it's actually seven and three ace. Um, it may look like seven and a half from that angle, um, but seven and three ace. So that's from the bridge to the bottom of the crossover ring and the bridge to the bottom of the um, spring spacer divider thing right there. On the rears, what I did, so from the bridge to the bottom of this ring, five and a half inches, bridge to the bottom of this crossover ring, uh, seven and a quarter inches. So that's where I'm going to start with everything. Uh, a couple hundred miles should settle in some. I don't know exactly how much it'll be. Um, but uh, the very last part of this video will kind of be my thoughts on it after I do get some time on it. I don't want to just post this video with, you know, just the basic install and say it's the greatest thing in the world because I honestly don't know yet. Uh, running it down the road, it does definitely seem like it will be softer um, just based on like when you gas it and, you know, you can feel the suspension start to work. But it's just been on flat ground, so I really can't say yet. So stay tuned to the end of this video, uh, and I will give you my opinions on it.